Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. We spoke earlier today to Will Randall, who's the CEO of Freeman Gold. They're a TSXV listed company with exploration assets in Idaho. And if you want our thoughts and opinions on that conversation and indeed the company itself, you can find that at cruxinvestor.com forward slash club, where you can also find detailed company reports, commentary from market experts from around the world on a variety of commodities. There are training videos, uh, there are summaries of other interviews that we've done for other companies, and of course there's a thriving community of investors sharing their thoughts and ideas with each other. And if you go there now and sign up for the waiting list, you qualify for a seven-day free trial. And of course we'd love your feedback too, so give us a like, leave your thoughts below, and if you want to see what we talked about today, take a look in the description. Well, how are you doing, sir? Very well, thank you. Well, thanks for joining us. This is a new story. Well, actually, it's a new company as well. So we're going to hear it for the first time. Um, and we've not spoken before, so looking forward to it. So where are you at the moment? I'm uh, in our offices in downtown Toronto. Downtown Toronto. Okay. How's life in Toronto? Quiet, I Oh, hear. it's quiet. Very, very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, work as usual, thankfully. Yeah, that's 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 uh, that is what we want to hear. Um, well, like, well, why don't you kick off? Give us a one minute overview of the business, and I'll pick it up from there. Yeah, so we're a mineral exploration and development company with a flagship asset in Idaho, USA, where we've managed to acquire um, a project that starts off with a historical resource defined in the nineties, uh, one point two million ounces that we're hoping to drill off, expand and build up into 1.52 million ounces over the next 12 months. Okay, thanks for that. Look, it's, with all new stories, we love to try and understand the business plan behind it. But first, can we start with you and your management team? You know, Give us a bit of background to what you have done in the past, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a geologist by training um, and spent the last 10 years of my career developing assets in uh, South America, where I had more success developing an asset along with the current um, Freeman Gold team, uh, where we teamed up and developed the Southern Los Angeles Lithium Brine project in Argentina, uh, which eventually became Lithium X, which we then put into pre-production stage and sold to a Chinese conglomerate for just under 300 million Canadian in 2018. Um, our, our general team, who was led by Paul Matizic, uh, who's a legend in the, in the mining space, uh, we've done this a number of times already, uh, where we've got assets that we figure are undervalued, have the potential to be uh, producers and a world-class asset, and develop them through to production stage within a commodity cycle. And at that point, have them either go into production by a, by a build team or uh, sold off in an M&A process. Okay, does that give us a clear as to what you're trying to do here? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, th I think we're at the beginning of a gold cycle here. Um, and I think we have an asset that is severely undervalued with a lot of upside uh, to grow into a significant resource base um, in a jurisdiction that is much, much easier than Argentina, um, where we have a lot of other companies looking to develop mines that are going into production by mid-tier and major companies. So yeah, I think we have a big push here. Our team is focused. Uh, to get this fully valued, de-risked, and moving through into the production stage over the next uh, two or three years, which I think the cycle is going to last. Okay, so that's what you've got. Let's get into the, the plan of how you're going to do this, okay? Because we are, yeah, great. Gold bull cycle, lovely. Uh, anyone can make money, can't they? <laughs> okay. <love> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I want to hear, you know, the plan and just lay it out for how you're going to deliver it because you, you've got some historic data. Great start. So the size that we're starting off with um, is around a million ounces, but it's high grade. It's heat bleachable for the most part at surface, open pitable in Idaho. So, you know, million ounces, yes. Is it huge? Not quite, but very, very valuable ounces. Um, to put in perspective, you know, I've worked with companies before that are mining 0.4 gram per ton material in a similar setting and making a ton of cash flow in these, in these days. So at one gram per ton average, with a high grade four gram per ton core at surface. Uh, these are cash flow machines. And uh, so that's our starting point. We've identified areas on existing drilling where we can get this into 1.5 to 2 million ounces by completing phase one and phase two drill programs, uh, which brings us to about uh, Q2 of next year uh, on that target. 
And it's also wide open on strike. We have an 8.5 kilometer strike length of, of this Millerized structure uh, to grow beyond the 2 million ounce mark. So I see this company not as a 1 million ounce, but 2 million ounce and beyond over the next year. Well, it is if you do things in the right way and in the right order. So you, let's look at the historic data. What, you, you, you're talking about one gram, but what else do you know? What else do we know as far as the deposit? Well, it does have a, a high grade. Um, these are horizontal lenses, so gently dipping. And um, we have a high grade core at the beginning. The main section of this deposit is drilled down to 200 meters, but is stopped in ore. But those 200 meters average around two grams per ton with a 60 meter interval near surface averaging 3.5 to 4.2 grams per ton. So that high grade core obviously at, at, at surface sets us apart as far as IRRs and, and paybacks in, in the short term. And being wide open at depth as well, we can, we can get this growing in the high grade portion of depth. Um, and our phase one drill program is underway. It's a 5,000 meter program to get us to that 30, first uh, 43101, that one 1.2 million ounces. Um, our drill program, we've completed 2,500 meters of the 5,000 right now. And uh, we'll have those results come into market starting in around three to four weeks, continuously into New Year. And uh, follow that up with the initial resource estimate, which is the 43101 compliant estimate that you are uh, referring to. By, uh, when's that, when would that be completed by? Q121. But like end so, of Q1? No, no, uh, earlier than that. Uh, if the labs comply with us um, and we get our assay turnaround as we are hoping, we should have that out uh, February. You've talked in your PowerPoint about uh, defining another one and a half, uh, sorry, defining one and a half to two million answers. How do you, how do, you uh, do that? Have you got enough money for that? And so what? Yeah, well, so we, we, are, we are fully funded. Um, obviously, you know, we're, 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 we can be more aggressive and, and complete more drilling. But the way we get this from one to two million ounces is the core part of the drilling was done on patented claims. And, but there are a spatter of drill holes north and south on strike that we can follow up on, infill, and tie into the main resource area, extend a little bit of depth as well. And that's how we see ourselves getting into this 1.5 to 2 million ounce range. Um, and that's just sort of within the, 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 the drilled out area. Okay. Again, what I'm, what I'm trying to understand is the, the pace at which you move, because this gold cycle is not going to be around forever okay and what you hope to achieve within this cycle in fact you know how do you define your work program on that basis yeah so we we have an aggressive program going we started off right right off the bat with two drills uh we got the drills turning about a month after we uh raised the money so we've been you know we acquired this company um just earlier this year so it's it's gone we've gone you know flat out so far and uh we continue to to increase the rate of, of development into the phase two drilling, which we'll probably do with three drills um, and get, in, get us into that 1.5 to 2 million ounce range um, towards the end of Q2 next year. Okay, so you've um, so you bought the company in April, you raised the money in June, you started drilling in August, so you, you are moving at a, at a lick um, here. Um, just just on the on the current, current 1.2 resource, what's the idea? You, you, you have sort of said elsewhere that there will be no need for additional drilling. You can use existing drill data. Are you going to be doing an infill or is, or is that not necessary? Yeah, so we, we definitely want to do infill. Uh, so the way this works is to make it compliant, we do our own drilling, infill, increase the resource, uh, sorry, the, the confidence. So M&I, hopefully. Um, and then obviously we, we carry on exploring beyond that. But the infill is necessary. A lot of the, the previous work was done with RSC drilling. Um, we're coming in with oriented cores, so we're getting a much better understanding of the geology, where these lenses go at depth and on strike, and uh, we're already seeing the fruits of that with some some um, good success in, in the current drill program. I mean, is is that the point you're going to raise more money? Is it the point at which you know people start taking note? I mean, what what happens at that point? Well, a two million ounce deposit with the heap leachable portion um, intact is very, very valuable. Um, you know, those are some of the highest margin operations in, in the world. So, um, you know, I think that um, as an end goal is good in and in of itself. But fortunately, we have staked um, a lot of this, um, this area 
and north and south along the main uh, shear zone that hosts this deposit, we have an 8.5 kilometer strike length. And it's very common for this type of deposit to have satellite deposits north and south. Um, the easiest uh, reference is the nearby Bear Track mine, where they have a main pit and four satellite pits. So our further growth beyond that is exploring for these satellite pits that, as I said, are very common, and uh, we have a high probability of increasing our resource count. On a, from a property perspective, uh, we're really well. Um, we're in a great position. We own 100% of all the claims. We, we tidied that up um, in the first half of the year. So we did a deal with Yamana where we removed a back-end right um, that they had over a portion of the asset. So now we have everything free and clear, um, and we can develop this without any hindrance. Um, whether we grow the property package anymore, um, at this point, that's not contemplated. I think we have enough. But of course, those things change as you get round results. Right, so you're drilling at the moment, so you've obviously got all the permits necessary to do that. Um, what else What else do you need to be um, doing in terms of the permitting, licensing, and you know, operating in Idaho? Yeah, so a big part of developing a, a mining asset is not only you know how big is our resources, is how clean is all the rest. How much you can you de-risk this asset to get it close to to production? Um, and as I said, all within um, this commodity cycle, because you know we got to really move and, and be aggressive. So key elements uh, that we are sorting out are metallurgical uh, testing, uh, see whether this is going to act much like uh, the other deposits in the region. And uh, we already are working with a metallurgist on that. Um, we have to get the environmental portion sorted out. Um, AGR in the 90s did a lot of the baseline work. So hydro, flora, fauna, archaeological is underway. Uh, we don't have rivers and major water bodies on, on the property. So we do have you know, um, a relatively smooth aspect when it comes to, to permitting. Um, and we have all those aspects uh, on the way as well. We're also not very close to a, a town or a, a settlement. Uh, the closest one is about five uh, miles away and it's, and it's a few houses. Salmon is about a 40 minute drive. Um, so we're, we're in a good position to de-risk it, but we, we got to work hard over the next uh, couple of years to do so. Okay, so you, you acquired this back in uh, April it, from, um, well, you were lodged and you, you, you basically bought this asset. So talk about the sort of corporate structures that you've got there now. I mean, is it, is, has that been cleaned up? Has it needed to be cleaned up? Thankfully, it didn't need to be cleaned up um, because the previous owner was a trust company that must have gone bankrupt because it had its assets seized by the SEC and uh, sold off as part of an auction process. So it, all that came across were titled and uh, we got this nice and clean. Okay, and what about the management team? So what are you sitting on? Have you invested actual cash? Is this sweat equity? Both, <laughs> both. Got our money and our, and our equity and uh, obviously mostly uh, myself. This is uh, my primary and only focus. Um, but yeah, we've, uh, we're, we're all heavily invested. We own about 20% of the outstanding shares. Um, so that makes us, you know, as a group, the largest uh, shareholder. And then the next uh, significant shareholder is Yamana Gold with 5%. But that was part of a, like, um, a back-end deal, a back-end rights, which you, you got rid of. Yeah. So that's what it cost you? That's what it cost us, yeah. It, I mean, and we'd been negotiating them for a while. So once we once they saw that we created enough value and a market cap, um, um, they, you know, we, we came to that, to that, um, that agreement. Um, but that was, that's a key transaction for us. Uh, that, that would have been a significant overhang as we got to, you know, 100 million, 200 million market cap. But, but why is that important to you? Because obviously they, they, they had these rights. They clearly didn't want this property enough to um, you know, maintain those. You bought them for 5%. So that's just an option for them at some point. Or, or are they going to be more than that? Are you, are you suggesting that they're going to be some kind of partner in the future? Well, that's, uh, that's definitely uh, what, I'm, what I am suggesting, obviously. Uh, they have uh, similar shareholdings in other companies in, in Idaho and in very close proximity to us. Um, you, can, you guys can look that up. Um, and they're clearly, in my mind, looking to see what's happening in the state to see how we develop these these assets. Okay, but there's been no conversations to date about them, you know, working with you guys or advising you in any level. Uh, not formally, not formally. <coughs> but yeah, we, we do have come ongoing conversations, but not it's not in a formal agreement. Okay, so you guys raised um, what was it, nine million bucks back in June, um, mainly retail through brokers, or is there any institutional in there at this point? 
there was some institutional, it was actually 10.3 that we raised. Um, and there was some institutional ownership. The lead order is an institution. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, the, the lead order was an institution. Um, so we had, I would say the split is about 80, 20 retail institution. And obviously now we're looking to, to increase our institutional ownership. As we so the asset. And that, that's predominantly uh, North American or Canadian? Canadian. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So, right. So in, in the next few months, we know that you're drilling, you're going to get this, uh, this 43101 completed, then you're going to start working on the two. So to come back to, to me and talk about the, the cycle, because you appreciate this gold cycle is really, really important to you. Do you want to do everything that you need to do within this cycle and exit? So it's, it's just cookie cutter approach as far as you're concerned to this, because you've been a lithium guy, right? This is gold. It's different. Or is it? Uh, no, the way the way the way the assets are de-risked and and developed, uh, not that different. Obviously, technically, it's it's different, but uh, the expertise in gold is is much greater than in lithium. Um, so, you know, I actually find that this is a welcome change. Um, so the technical aspect is actually going to be a lot simpler to to work our way around. Uh, there are plethora of guys that have a lot more experience than I do in these assets that we can hire and, and help us on the technical side. But from the perspective of de-risking the asset within a cycle, it's very similar. And um, it's a big focus on getting this. Uh, it's a race to production, if you want to put it that way. Um, get all the aspects lined up within this cycle so that it can go into production. Um, and I always like to point out that within the management team, we've done this five times. I've done it you know, less than that, but within the management five times. And three of those assets are currently in production. Okay. Well, that's, that's kind of an important point because it, it seems to be the major point of differentiation between you and all the other stories who come on and tell us the, the similar story each week. Okay, so why are we buying into your version versus anyone else's version? Well, because I believe um, in maximizing shareholder value through maximizing the value of the property, right? Um, and to do that, you have to do that flat out all the time all different aspects in conjunction and within a cycle. Because if you let it go by, uh, we're going to be sitting on this property for another four or five years and much harder to finance, dilution, all the rest of it. So it's a big, big push to maximize the value in a two-year time frame that I think we have in this cycle at the very least. Okay. So in two years' time, what does your company look like? Well, two years. So in the, the first phase, the first year, as it were, is the resource expansion and maximizing uh, selection that we've gone through uh, sort of broadly. Um, and then we have another year to bring all the permits up to date, uh, the metallurgical studies up to date, and um, the social agreements um, in place as well. So in two years' time, this looks like an asset with a very significant resource base, uh, with great economics, ready to go into production, ready for a build team or an M&A deal. Right. And then that's someone like a Yamana. That's, that's who you're aiming for. Potentially Yamana or, or, you know, we're opportunistic. If it's, uh, you know, the last, the last deal we sold to a Chinese group, uh, deals before that went to current uh, producers um, that were publicly listed. So, um, you know, it's, at that point, it's a question of uh, more value, the better. Okay. You have 36 million bucks today. You happy with that? Uh, well, if, if I'm buying shares, so uh, um, I think there's a lot of upside, right? Uh, the average per ounce for, for our type of deposit is somewhere around $140, $150 per ounce range. So as we get into that million ounce and two million ounce count, you can do the math. There's huge upside. Um, and I think it's just a matter of time before, before we get there. Right now, we don't have a single current drill hole out into the market, right? So there's, you know, there's a lot of validation process to go um, uh, through over the next six months. Okay, well, like, um, thanks for running us through that. Well, it, it's it's early days. It's not much to talk about other than say that you've got the team with the experience to set up on a process which you've just laid out for us. So I appreciate that. Come back on and tell us when you've got some data that we can start looking at and trying to understand exactly what it is that you've got there and if you're going to be able to deliver on the timeline that you think. Appreciate your time. Thank you. You got it. Absolutely. It'd be my pleasure.